Building a Second Brain. That's the title of a book by author Tiago Forte. Now this book is not about machine learning. Sorry if your neural network finds that disappointing. Now the title of the book sounds a little bit sensationalist, but it turns out it actually delivers on its promise, as long as you don't take the title too literally. Now this book isn't intended specifically for software developers, but I feel like our field is one that stands to benefit the most from the techniques that he describes in this book. The reality is the sheer amount of information that software developers are expected to ingest and retain every day, it's just not realistic to be able to handle all of that without some kind of external help. A lot of the information is about off-the-shelf technologies like React or CSS or databases. And then there's also a lot of information about proprietary systems that you might have built or your team has built. Anyway, this video is inspired by the book, Building a Second Brain, but I won't go into the specifics on what he covers in the book. So if you do wanna check that out, I'll put a link down below in the description. This isn't sponsored or anything, it's just one of the best reads I've had in a while. What we are going to cover in this video is the notion of Obsidian supporting Mermaid and Bear ink dropping the ball by not supporting it. Seriously though, what we are going to cover in this video are five different knowledge management apps that are either intended specifically for software developers or have features that make them software developer friendly. Now there are a lot of options for knowledge management. I can't possibly cover them all, but I chose the most compelling ones and took them for a test drive. At the end of the video, I'll explain what I chose to use for my knowledge management and why. So what are the criteria for a good knowledge management app for software developers? Let's take a look at the use cases that software developers might have for a knowledge management app. The first use case is design proposals. Now anything but the smallest design proposal is probably gonna have some diagrams in it. And there's gotta be some way to make those diagrams. Now we don't want software developers using Photoshop or Illustrator, somebody's gonna get hurt. It's really helpful to be able to create diagrams from code so that we can iterate on them quickly. Code-based diagrams are really useful because if I get some feedback in the design review from my team, I can just go and change one or two lines of code and I get a new diagram immediately instead of going into Photoshop and deleting stuff and realigning everything. It's just much easier to iterate on diagrams when they're from code. There's a syntax called Mermaid that allows you to write code and create a diagram from that code. We'll consider Mermaid support when we go through the five apps that we're gonna talk about, but we'll go into Mermaid in a little more detail at the end of the video. The other use case that software developers might have for a knowledge management app is meeting notes. And Markdown can be really helpful for meeting notes because it allows you to format your text as you're typing, so you don't have to miss what people are saying just because you're trying to format your text. Another use case is career tracking. So if you're going for that promotion, you wanna track all the projects that you work on. And ideally you'd wanna have links to the design docs for those projects, or maybe code artifacts or something like that. And Markdown can be really helpful here. And also linking is really helpful. The fourth use case that developers might have is simply tracking knowledge. So if I learned something new about React or I learned something new about Postgres, I can write that down in an organized way so that I can retrieve it later without too much trouble. Or maybe a teammate teaches me something about how our system works and I wanna write that down so I can recover it later and maybe share it with others as well. Another thing that cuts across all of these use cases are Vim key bindings. A lot of software developers use Vim as an IDE, or maybe they use VS Code, but they use the Vim motions within VS Code. It's nice to be able to use Vim keystrokes in your knowledge management app, because then you can move around really quickly if you're already really familiar with those keystrokes, and it just gives you the ability to manage your knowledge that much more efficiently. The last thing I'll say is that syncing your knowledge across devices is pretty important, but it's not really a distinguishing factor because all five of the apps that we're gonna talk about can do this to some capacity. Okay, here we go. Let's talk about Inkdrop. Now Inkdrop is marketed specifically to software developers. If you go to their webpage, you actually see a React example right on the front of the page. The interesting thing about Inkdrop is that it was created and maintained by a solo developer who lives in Japan, and he actually has a YouTube channel with a sizable following. Inkdrop has a really aesthetically appealing interface and it allows you to organize your knowledge in a hierarchical way. So you have notebooks at the top, so you can put notes within a notebook and then you can also have sub notebooks within a notebook. So you can create whatever kind of hierarchy you want and you can get as complex as you want. In Inkdrop, every note can have a status associated with it and these statuses are active, on hold, completed, or dropped. And by default, completed or dropped notes won't actually appear in the default note pane. You actually have to go and filter by status to see the ones that were completed or dropped. That can be really nice because it allows you to easily set aside notes that might not be immediately actionable and really have your notes pane focus on the notes that are immediately relevant. Inkdrop does have a plugin infrastructure and there is a Vim plugin, so you can get the Vim keystrokes within notes. If you combine that with all the keyboard shortcuts that Inkdrop supports out of the box, you can get a really nice mouse-free experience if you want that. Inkdrop does have a 30-day free trial, but then it's $4.99 a month after that. Next up is Notion. And of the apps we're gonna talk about in this video, 
It's definitely the one with the most mass market appeal, but that doesn't necessarily make it a bad option for developers. The first thing that sets Notion apart from everything else we're gonna talk about today is its focus on aesthetic appeal. It gives you tons of ways to add pizzazz and color to your notes. Maybe to some that sounds a little bit superficial, but if you're into aesthetic appeal, most front-end developers probably are, this might be a huge advantage for you. The other thing that sets Notion apart is it has a very, very generous free tier. If you're using Notion for personal use, there's a really good chance you won't ever have to pay a dime for it. Some apps make you pay if you wanna sync across multiple devices. Notion is not one of them. Notion does support Markdown in a limited way. For example, if you type three hashes and then a space and then some text, that'll be a heading. But if you wanted to go back and remove one of those hashes to make the heading bigger, you can't just go back and delete one of those hashes because they're no longer there. You'd actually have to use keyboard shortcuts or the menu system to make it a bigger heading. That Notion might be a bitter pill to swallow for diehard Markdown users. Despite its mass market appeal, Notion's code syntax highlighting and mermaid support are actually right up there with the best of them. Now let's talk about key bindings. The documentation actually says that there's key bindings for everything, so theoretically you could get a completely mouse-free experience, but they aren't the Vim key bindings. If you're Vim diesel, this might be a deal breaker for you. Notion actually doesn't have a plugin infrastructure at all, so if you want a new feature, you're at the mercy of the Notion developers to add it. However, Notion does have a huge template library, both from Notion and from the community. You can find templates for everything from project management to meal planning. Meal planning can be important for software developers too. Now let's take a look at Bear. Now Bear is only available on iOS and macOS, which is obviously a deal breaker if you're on something else, but if you're on an Apple platform, it's actually a huge advantage because a developer can really focus on optimizing the interface for those platforms. Now Bear has a really, really clean interface and it's super minimalist. It's definitely the most minimalist app that we're gonna look at in this video. It's so minimalist that you can't organize your notes in any sort of hierarchy. The only way you can organize them is by tagging them and then filtering on a given tag. Bear does support Markdown, and I'd say it's a little bit better than Notion. Bear actually does retain your Markdown characters. So if you do an H3 heading, for example, you type three hashes and you wanna go back and remove a hash, you can actually do that because those hash characters are still there for you to delete. Markdown is not enabled by default, so if you do wanna use it, make sure to go into preferences and manually enable it. Bear, unfortunately, does not have any mermaid support. So for developers that need Mermaid, that might be bad news bears. So if you're in the Apple ecosystem and you don't need a hierarchy for your knowledge and you don't need Mermaid, Bear actually might be a really good fit. Now it's time to address the elephant in the room. I'm not talking about Evernote. I'm actually talking about Obsidian. Obsidian is really well known for its graph view that lets you visualize all the connections between your notes. You could argue that Obsidian might still be a good choice even if you don't use that graph visualization because you can still organize your notes in a hierarchical structure similar to other apps. Now you know an app is developer friendly when it has Vim mode built in. To enable Vim mode in Obsidian, just go into preferences and turn it on. When you turn on Vim mode, it'll actually quiz you on Vim because they don't want you going in a Vim mode and not be able to get out. So be prepared for that quiz if you turn on Vim mode. Obsidian does have a plugin architecture and there's a rich set of community plugins to do just about anything you could possibly want. One example is relative line numbers, which can make a lot of sense if you have Vim mode turned on. So if you're using Obsidian for personal use, there's a really good chance you might never need to pay a dime for it because it just stores files on disk and you can sync those files to whatever cloud provider you like. And actually out of the box, it supports iCloud. Obsidian has Mermaid support out of the box without even installing any plugins. Because Obsidian just works with Markdown files on disk, that can make it really easy to transition to another knowledge management app if you need to later. We've been talking a lot about developer friendliness thus far, but this last app takes the cake for developer friendliness because it's not actually a standalone app. It's actually a VS Code plugin and it's called Dendron. Dendron aims to be very similar to Obsidian in the sense that it's focused on this graph view of your notes and the links between them. But because it's a VS Code extension, it's right in your IDE with you. The fact that Dendron is a VS Code extension opens up a ton of possibilities. You can have one pane on the right with your note and another pane on the left with the code. You can copy and paste to and from both of them. You can also have a completely mouse-free experience if you use the Vim extension for VS Code. One other thing is that since Dendron and Obsidian deal directly with Markdown, technically they're compatible. So you can take uh, Obsidian Vault and open that in Dendron and vice versa. I haven't actually tried this, but people say it works. So Dendron can be a really compelling option if VS Code is your primary editor and you like Obsidian's feature set. There you have it, five apps for managing knowledge as a software developer. I mentioned we go more into detail about Mermaid at the end. Again, Mermaid is a mechanism for creating diagrams from code. And when you're first creating a diagram, that's not really a huge deal, but when you have to iterate on that diagram, 
making changes to it and realigning everything can get really time consuming. So it's a lot easier when the diagram is generated from code because you can just remove or add lines as necessary and the diagram will update instantly. You can use Mermaid for things like flowcharts, Gantt charts, sequence diagrams, class diagrams, even pie charts. In the flowchart case, just write flowchart LR, LR means left to right, and then below that, just start describing the relationships between entities in that flowchart. Okay, given all this, what have I chosen to use as my knowledge management app? I'd really love to use Dendron, but unfortunately VS Code is not my primary IDE right now. I love Bear's interface, it's nice and clean, but unfortunately it doesn't quite have the developer friendliness in terms of markdown support and mermaid support that I'm looking for. Also, I do like to organize my knowledge in a hierarchical way. Inkdrop is a really strong contender, but that can be a little hard to justify given that some of the other options are completely free. It also doesn't have a browser-based interface. You need to download the native app to use it. I think the one I'm most likely to switch to in the future is Obsidian. I love its graph view, its focus on the links between your notes. I love its collection of community plugins, native Vim support. It's got pretty much everything you could possibly need. But the app I've chosen to use for now is Notion. I just can't bring myself to forego the aesthetics of Notion. And I like the fact that it has a web interface, which Obsidian doesn't have. I am very sad that it doesn't support Vim keystrokes, but I think I can live with that. We'll see. The other thing is that the way I'm using Notion, I likely won't ever have to pay a dime for it because the way I use it sits comfortably in the free tier. Let me know what you think of the five apps that we covered, which ones seem interesting, which ones don't, which ones you might want to use, and let me know whether you think knowledge management apps are underutilized by software developers. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.